on behalf of everyone at the Kentucky Lottery. We are so proud to partner again with Simmons College of Kentucky for this virtual lecture series celebrating Black History Month. We're neighbors here in Louisville, located at the entry to Portland, not far from the Simmons campus. Simmons, founded in 1879, is a part of the fabric of our community by helping provide educational opportunities. And we at the Kentucky Lottery also work to serve that purpose. Black history is not just something reserved for February. It's celebrated every day through our friends, our neighbors, and our community that embraces diversity. This rich history embodies what our country strives to be, and this richness and diversity are what makes America and American history so unique. Although most of you probably know the Kentucky Lottery for our scratch-off tickets or big Powerball jackpots, promoting education and workforce development in Kentucky is at the heart of what we do. 22 years ago, members of the General Assembly in Frankfort dedicated Kentucky Lottery proceeds to funding college scholarship and grant programs. Since then, the largest chunk of our proceeds, now more than four billion, with a B, four billion dollars, have gone to fund programs to help Kentucky students attend college. These funds pay for the popular Key Scholarship Program as well as the need-based College Access Program. Between these two initiatives, just last year, more than 120 Simmons students were able to use $213,000 to attend Louisville's own HBCU. For the time during which Simmons students have been able to use these dollars, more than 700 students have used nearly a million dollars to pursue their degree at Simmons. These are numbers in which we take great pride. To put this in perspective, 95 cents of every dollar of college student financial aid awarded in Kentucky comes straight from Kentucky Lottery proceeds. This economic investment adds to the prosperity of our community at large. And in the past 21 years, one out of every five Kentucky residents has received a college scholarship or grant paid for by the Kentucky Lottery. We're proud to stand with Simmons College of Kentucky to recognize Black History Month and the contributions of HBCUs. Simmons College of Kentucky is an integral part of the community in Louisville, as is the Kentucky Lottery, and we appreciate the opportunity to help bring this important series to you. Today, we know that Kentucky's most deserving students are counting on us, and our mission of fueling imagination and funding education is more important than ever. Thank you. develop leaders. We generate change agents. We produce 80% of all black doctors and dentists. We provide a sense of belonging, a celebration of our unique culture. We are the pipeline that produced many of America's black first. The nation's VP elect is a product of this distinct heritage. And we are proud to be Louisville's only historically black college and universities. Simmons College of Kentucky. We are Louisville's HBCU. Simmons has uncovered a history that connects the school to some of America's greatest thinkers. The press conference was held today in Louisville. <laughs> History-making partnership. Announcing a partnership between Simmons HBCU. College and Jefferson County Public School. The teacher shortage. There is teacher shortage across America. The resources really clear. And I can see how Simmons plays such a critical role. Right. Attention to the need for minority teachers. Partnership intentionally designed to build more minority teachers. Simmons does not just a school. We have a rich history. We have and a how important school. this partnership is going to be in helping to correct a historic wrong and towards underrepresented minority. We have to do better on the needs. This program is the beginning of something that could be really special.
to have Simmons as a partner in recruiting minority teachers says two things. One, there is nothing that happens in any community that's any more important to the future of that community than the productivity of its school system. Two, there's addressing an enduring issue in the education workforce. The reason why this partnership is so significant is first of all, HBCUs specialize in preparing black teachers to teach in the classroom. HBCUs have always been committed to that. And so when you see the disproportionate statistics, when you really think about the culture of HBCUs, you know, from Cheney to Morehouse to Spelman to Simmons, it's really no surprise that you see so many terminal degrees, you know, PhDs, MDs, JDs, awarded to people who started out at HBCUs. This is really a return to what we were doing in the first place. Dramatic impact. So we ought to just kind of take a minute and reflect on the reality of Simmons and the position it occupies in addressing something that we haven't been able to solve yet. place everything in the context on what was going on with black people in the late 1800s. You, you see the end of the Civil War in 1865, the Reconstruction Amendment, 13th Amendment freeing the slaves, 14th Amendment granting, granting citizenship and due process under the law, and finally in 1870, the 15th Amendment, which gave black men the right to vote. Four months after Lee surrendered to Grant in Appomattox Courthouse, the former slaves in this state came together and formed the General Association. Their task with creating a new black intelligentsia that are gonna become the socio-political leaders of black America, that's really the context that Simmons fit into as we were going into the 20th century. And then in 1879, Simmons College of Kentucky opened its doors. Reconstruction ends in 1876, 1877 with the hayes tilden Compromise, you see incredible retrenchment in white America. The pressure was on all black colleges to pattern themselves after Hampton Institute, which was designed to prepare black people for the low tier jobs and not for the professional jobs. William J. Simmons militated against that and said, Howard is our model. So he set the trajectory for Simmons, and there were two primary goals that he had. Goal number one was to create a black professional class, which they did. His second goal was to create an institution that was black governed. When you talk about excellence, black people have always understood they had to be better. HBCUs understood and understand that they have to be better. And so they're not just teaching reading, writing, arithmetic. They're teaching a commitment to something greater than the individual. In fact, it was the only institution in America that had a law school, medical school, liberal arts college. The entire faculty was black. The entire governance was black. So it was the personification of black empowerment. That excellence is always there. As the Greeks talked about, that arete always reaching for something higher, not just for themselves, but those around them. So it started for the purpose of training the black professional class and especially teachers. Some of the most prestigious names in every facet of education were involved with Simmons College. Education was important to African Americans at that time for the same reason that education is important to African Americans now. It is absolutely essential that black people understood the system in which they were functioning, no matter how unfair that system was or is. And then a huge catastrophic economic development takes it down. And we don't know how to hold on to the institution itself. What happened to Simmons is what happened to many institutions, especially black institutions in America. I mean, this was a, a time of extreme racism and the access to opportunity, it, it was bad. 
stock market crashed in 1929, the banks foreclosed on them, they lost their property, and the University of Louisville purchased the property to establish a segregated division. And not only did they use their superior financial resources to purchase the campus that slaves had built, but spoke very disparagingly of Simmons University. Kent said that Simmons was a poor excuse for a university. But what Raymond Kent should have said was not that Simmons was a poor excuse for a university, but the United States was a poor excuse for a democracy. White arrogance in America is a heck of a thing. The lack of awareness of what's gone on with black people in this country. How HBCUs couldn't just be colleges, they had to serve as primary schools as well. But the products coming out of those schools were incredibly stellar. But black people are always a stellar people. All they needed was an equal opportunity. What is tragic is everything that Simmons once did and everything that Simmons once had, from our curriculum, to our degrees, to our clubs, and even our sororities. That story got dropped off the consciousness of the city. No historical black college and university has ever made the comeback that we made and no college in American history has ever lost its campus and returned back to the campus that it lost. Perhaps through this engagement, we will talk about each of us challenging each of us to bring forward 20 young people, 30 young people, whatever you can take on to help illuminate a path to a future that they may have difficulty seeing. You really touched on what I think is probably one of, if not the most important function of HBCUs. They set up a situation where students understand that black people have a history worth studying, lives worth living, and a future worth constructing. We have to see every child in every classroom in our community as the potential leader of something great. When you take institutions like that, peopled by those types of professors who love those kids and teach them to function without fear, there is no substitute for that. These children are developing an orientation to the world that certainly includes their immediate survival, but also must include, must include a sense of what their future holds. HBCUs, they've been able to take those lost souls and produce something at the end that sometimes their parents don't even recognize. Then the children can go back and rescue their elders. And that's as it should be. Many say, and the child shall lead, right? Going to Simmons is definitely an experience because of the history that we have here. I've learned so much and I love my teachers. I guess the best part. But he pushed me enough and cared for me enough to let me know that I'm more than the choices and decisions that I'm making. I love my HBCU, Simmons College of Kentucky. It's literally changing my life. Established in 1879, it still stands today majestically in the heart of our city as a nationally accredited institution of higher learning. The 
list of influential African Americans connected to this institution reads like a who's who of black history, including Ida B. Wells, Booker T. Washington, Samuel Plato, and Charles Parrish, Jr. A member of the fraternity of HBCUs across the country with an amazing record of success, HBCUs produce 70% of all African American dentists and doctors, 50% of our nation's African American teachers, and 80% of all African American judges graduated from an HBCU. And one thing I know for certain, our great city of Louisville will not reach her full potential without a great HBCU. We need Simmons to flourish. How did HBCUs come to fill such a valuable role in American life? To answer that question, listen to the words found in The Life and Times of Booker T. Washington, written in 1960. On its own initiation, the freed race began to found schools. About 5% of the emancipated people could read and write, and these were not slow to inject that spirit into the rest of their people. Some of the former slaves who had heard of colleges and universities aspired to found such for their people. The most remarkable instance occurred at Louisville, Kentucky, succeeding the close of the war in 1865. And though bearing the marks of slavery on their bodies, took steps to begin a place of learning which came to be known as a large and flourishing college for colored people which stands today in Louisville in the heart of that city. From that early time until now, it has done excellent work, not alone for the colored race, but for the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and is still a great educational lighthouse to a struggling people. One of the objectives of Simmons College is to create a stellar teacher education program that will recruit and train teachers for JCPS, in fact, hopefully for the entire state of Kentucky. To have a workforce that was a direct reflection of our student population, we were going to have to take some significant steps. And the work that Simmons is doing, I knew that HBCUs with the number of teachers um, they produce nationally that that was a direct partnership that could have a dramatic influence. Not to appreciate what we have with Simmons here in the city of Louisville is the equivalent of San Antonio not appreciating the Alamo. It helps all of those. It helps the entire community. It helps an individual to be able to gain an education, to be able to advance in his or her life. To the extent those individuals live in a city, they impact the educational attainment level of the city, state, and the nation. Research is very clear that when an African-American student has at least one African-American teacher, the likelihood of them being successful dramatically increases. We really want to develop this pipeline where every single year in the future we're going to have hundreds. Create chances for every student who lives in West Louisville who wants to get a college education. In other words, let them know they can change the world. It isn't so much just the HBCU. It is the ability to have leadership that is willing to take on that self-governance and challenge the boundaries of society. Dr. Cosby is instrumental and has provided the idea of how will you restart the black identity through the black church in a way we haven't seen since Dr. King. Let me tell you, I think part of the reason Simmons is growing is number one, it has a great leader a visionary leader, but behind that leader are a lot of hardworking individuals who are committed to the success of every student. And I think that what has maybe come full circle is what those founding fathers and mothers for those institutions saw. Many in the, in the country are now seeing that anew. I'm Jackie Ballmore, Vice President of the UMA and John Ball Foundation. Although we're located in Texas, over the last four years, we've made grants that exceed half a million dollars to Simmons College of Kentucky. As you say, I serve as President of Kentucky State. It's to my understanding from the most recent economic impact study, Kentucky State has an annual impact of $100 million poured into the Frankfurt economy. And what we're talking about here is giving Simmons that same kind of opportunity. You have to look at it through the lens of being able to go to Simmons College, be a first generation college student, and graduate without any debt and how that actually propels you to have some level of opportunity inside of society. You want to look at the end in mind, like I don't want to be so overwhelmed and then you can't really focus on 
your career and you know the new future that you have they just straight out just told you like you know student loans is not really something that we want to encourage and part of the way we grow and develop is we emulate what we see seeing african americans in charge in control is really very important and it challenged me not only in my academia but also with really having more self-discoveries and it's like wow you know like I not only have trauma that my ancestors had experienced and I've been affected by it, but I'm also honored to be here. And I think that it really helped you as an individual to, um, to see how important you are, you know, in our history. Giving to HBCUs is not charity. Giving to HBCUs is an investment. You show me a community that has an HBCU, I will show you economic vitality, diversity, kids of color who have new aspirational role models. It is a win for the city. Simmons College of Kentucky, without question, is the greatest institution that has been created by blacks in the history of the state of Kentucky. It is without peer. The music department at Simmons College now offers a gospel track for its music performance degree. Our department of music exists to develop musical knowledge and skill. Students become beneficiaries of program features and faculty that distinguish music as both an academic and artistic discipline. Program options include brass and woodwind instruments, as well as guitar, bass, strings, piano, percussion, and voice. Your gifts will be encouraged and developed by a staff of experienced performing musicians and by the warm support of your peers. You will have frequent opportunities to perform, including vocal ensemble, gospel choir, jazz ensemble, marching band, and other ensembles, both on and off campus. Your music program can go no higher than those who lead it. Now is your time to build a strong music ministry from within. Help support passion already in your community. Help develop gifts already in your congregation. You might have the next James Cleveland in your church and don't know it. The heritage of artistic dignity found at historic black colleges and universities the tradition of black excellence in gospel music, the calling to use your gift to turn hearts. Your journey toward obtaining a bachelor's degree in music starts now. Simmons College of Kentucky. Apply today. Become a part of the legacy. In 1967 and 2020 are very similar. I am for law and order. I am the law and order candidate. Back then it was black power. Today it's Black Lives Matter. However trouble they may be, looting and arson have nothing to do with civil rights. But what we are now seeing on the streets of our cities has nothing to do with justice. There is uh, patience that people had with their struggle 52 years ago. Well, in my opinion, it just left from frustration, you know. And people will not be that patient today. So looting is what you do. We learned it from you. We learned violence from you. So if you want us to do better, then damn it, you do better. 
President Lyndon Johnson appointed an 11-member advisory commission on civil disorders aimed to identify the root causes. 1967, riots broke out in all of the major cities in America, including here in Louisville, Kentucky. And these riots had a devastating effect. They were called riots, but they were really rebellions against systemic and structural injustice. The Kerner Report makes clear that the civil unrest in 1967, mirroring that in 2020, is not based on the idea of overthrowing the American government. This is a statement that people want to participate more fully in American democracy. Those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. The Kerner Report, the only study in American history formed by the government which established the reality of systemic racism. They clearly said in this report, white America created this situation. And guess what? White America is maintaining. The basic conclusion of the Kerner Commission Report was that our nation is moving toward two societies, one black, one white, separate and unequal. One of the tragedies of the 20th century was that President Johnson did not act on the recommendations that were made in the report. And here we are, 52 years later, and what do we see? The killings of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, David McEntee have led people in more than 2,000 American cities to take to the streets in justifiable protest. The best time for Kerner Commission II would have been in 1968. The second best time for Kerner Commission II is today. Simmons College of Kentucky has recently announced the formation of the Kerner Commission 2.0, not to duplicate the work of the original, but to pick up the mantle and begin the work that was laid out. And on today, the 53rd anniversary, I'm offering my support to the work of the Kerner Commission 2.0. Many organizations are putting out resolutions, but what we see happening between Simmons College of Kentucky and Kentucky State University is resolved. This is our moment to take action for long, long overdue justice. As a society, we have got to figure out how to break this cycle of tragedy and violence and institutional racism. And the only way we can do it is together. And that's why this partnership is so important. It's why the launching of Kerner 2.0 is so important. This initiative is going to have four targets. The first is to educate the community about black issues. When People from outside of the community see problems taking place within the community or even situations that they believe are problems. They come in with what we call a deficit-based approach to solving those problems. And that deficit-based approach, it takes for granted that the community's broken. It takes for granted that the community has nothing to offer. That is not true scattered throughout West Louisville are indigenous, community-based institutions that are doing great things. The reason why the community is still strong is because of these institutions that many in the larger community has not taken the time to find out about and to be quite frankly sometimes don't have confidence in because of biases. Rutgers scholar Nancy DiTomaso pointed out the difference between formalized structural racism and an informal racism. Today racism is maintained not primarily by what white people and white institutions and philanthropy and government does against black people, but it's what philanthropy does for white people that they will not do for black people. Tremendously discouraging. So the impact of that philanthropic redlining goes from year to year and decade to decade. And sadly, it can be traced from generation to generation. 
Racial isolation is one of our enemies. When people don't see people that don't look like them, they become distrustful. The more we are integrated as a society, the more brilliant we will be. And so this partnership with Simmons College of Kentucky has been so important and we're going to get better and continue that development for years to come. And I think it will be, I know it will be a game changer for us in our racial equity policy and getting more African-American people to the classroom. But we're saying, let's look at what we have in the community already. And if we have something that's working, then let's build on it. Let's support it. No one knows a community and the needs of a community like the people that live in that community. The commission will help the larger community understand what is there in West Louisville. To raise awareness throughout the state about the assets. Will you realize that we offer value, that this community has value, not only for Louisville, but for the larger whole United States, then when you're coming in, you're sharing your assets. You're investing in people that have the potential to make your life better.